Today in the news, the CPU galore from AMD is confirmed, Intel's got ray and path tracing in mind, and both companies are going to talk upscalers. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Before you ask, yes, I know the microphone is in the shot, and that's because uh, I got two of my wisdom teeth removed. So uh, yeah, oh, and they also cut up my first molar to get some bone graft. Anyways, let's get started with AMD. In the last video, we talked about a massive influx of new CPUs coming in the month of April. A Ryzen 4100, 4500, 4600G, 5500, 5600, A5700, and A5700X. Oh, and of course, that's the 5800X3D. In any case, a lot of the CPUs that I just mentioned got announced by AMD officially, including the price. Starting with the comeback of the 4000 series, there's the quad core 4100, which will run you a cool $100 bill. Above that, there's a 4500, which is a six core 12 thread CPU for an extra $30. And if you want some integrated graphics with all that, it's going to be an extra $25 for the 4600G. Those three are based on the Zen 2 APUs. So while they are probably fine, you're buying a SKU that is a couple of generations old already. Up to the 5000 series of CPUs, then there's the Ryzen 5 5500 and the 5600. Both are six cores and 12 threads. And while the core count is exactly the same, the actual CPU itself is completely different. The 5500 is based on Zen 3 APU chips, while the 5600 is based on the regular Zen 3 architecture. You can tell because the amount of cash between the two is completely different. There are some advantages of going with one or the other. For example, lower latency and faster infinity fabric for the Zen 3 APU. So yeah, and there's also the 5700X. As is, it looks like it's just a rebadged Ryzen 5800 non-X. That model was only available to OEMs until now. Price-wise, it's pretty interesting at $299.99, but I mean, once again, the 12600K is probably a better choice performance-wise. But if you have a brand preference, well, the 5700X isn't a bad value. Seriously, the 12600K will wipe the floor with the 5700X, but the cost to entry with Intel platforms is definitely higher. On top of announcing all of those new CPUs, AMD is also completely opening up Ryzen 4000 and 5000 series processors to older motherboards, going back as far as the A320 boards. That means A320, B350, and X370 get full support. You just need to wait for AMD and the motherboard manufacturers to team up to release the new BIOSes. And lastly, we got the 5800X3D. The price is going to be 449 USD, which is how much the original 5800X was sold for. It's a pretty solid price for a chip that is supposed to outperform Intel's top of the line 12900K in gaming, just not in productivity. In my opinion, this suggests that AMD's Zen 4 CPUs are probably going to come later than we thought. Something like mid to late Q4, if I were to guess. If you were in a market right now, would you snag one now or wait? Let me know down below. Moving on to Intel, the company just set a date for the announcement of one of their ARC GPUs. And like the rumors were all saying, they're starting with laptops specifically the ARC A370M. In terms of performance, Lisa Pierce from Intel said this, the first Intel ARC discrete graphics products to enter the mobile market will enable up to a 2X improvement in graphics performance versus integrated graphics alone with maintaining similar form factors. I mean, yeah, 2X is a pretty big leap, but you're going from integrated to discrete, so it's not that big of a deal. Not what I would consider a major leap. For those waiting for their discrete graphics cards, we're looking at late Q2 or Q3 for workstation class models. Oh, and in about a week and a half during the games developers conference, Intel is also going to talk about their ray tracing accelerators. Actually, according to the Intel page itself about the talk, Intel is building their GPUs with path tracing in mind. Now, path tracing is a form of ray tracing where the bouncing path doesn't follow a set line. It also shoots a lot more rays per pixels. Like if what we have now is considered ray tracing 1.0, then path tracing is like ray tracing 2.0. They also budgeted time to talk about XESS, their upcoming technology, and they plan on comparing it to more commonly used upscalers. I wonder if they plan to pit XESS against DLSS and FSR. Hitman 3 is a game that should support 
support all three technologies. And for XESS and FSR, there's also Rift Breakers. And it turns out that both games will have slots with Intel. But if Intel plans on including FSR, they might be a bit too early. AMD is also set to talk about their FSR 2.0 technology during GTC. What's cool about FSR 2 is that once it's out, we'll be able to compare the first generation to the second generation. Deathloop is one of the games that's going to evolve with the technology. And since you guys know that I love my upscaling technologies, I guess that I'm gonna have to budget some time for more FSR content. Videocards.com, by the way, got a hold of slides with the comparison in Deathloop, but they haven't shared any yet. They did share this little tidbit, which shows the performance double with the new and improved FSR, although that is a boost in the performance mode of the upscaler. Hopefully the increase in image quality makes the performance mode better than with FSR 1.0. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. I'm very much in pain. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories, or if you want to share uh, stories about bone grafting and wisdom teeth removal. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Once again, this is not an ASMR episode. I'm just saying, take care. Goodbye. You think you're good looking. I mean, yeah, you're pretty nice. Pretty cute grill in the front for the dust, but you can't remove it, yikes.